Hi there, this is Amanda Frankel with our Crafty Playdate, and today we are going to make this super adorable uh, Christmas card. It stands up this way, so it's a vertical, vertical, as my kids used to call it, a vertical card. Um, I have a couple of techniques that I'm going to teach you today that are fabulous. This is a cute and quick Christmas card. You could zip out a bunch of them, and people would think that you slaved and really not so challenging. So let's get started. I'm going to um, show you two different methods of using the Stamparatus, two whole different techniques of using it. So I cannot wait to get started. Let's go. All right, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to take a piece of um, real red. This piece is cut, so if you held it together like this, you could see that it would be eight and a half by 11, right? So instead of cutting it this way, like I would for a normal card, I'm gonna cut it long ways, and that way, I will show you here. We're gonna go ahead and fold it. I'm gonna put my glasses on. Oh, God, it's so amazing how much more I can see with them on. Okay, look at that. All right, so there is our vertical card. Easy peasy, right? I promised. I have a little pearl stuck to my table. Okay, now we are going to bring in the Stamparatus. <clears throat> I will, I promise, put all of the card sizes, all of the pieces on here for you. Um, this is Whisper White. And I did make it a little smaller. Normally a, a panel on a card is just a quarter of an inch smaller um, than, the, than the base, but I made it a little bit more so that I would have a little bit wider red frame to my picture because of the very bold uh, stamp. And that is a stamp. I know you thought it was designer series paper. It is not. It is this disreputably dirty um, Buffalo check stamp. This has become, I think, my go-to background. So I'm super excited about it, and I wanna show you what I did here. Um, my paper, that is the, um, let me see. I had this all set up for class. Let me just put this on here. My paper pad, they just came out with pads like this that are already cut down, um, is not here yet. It is in shipment. I just got my email that it is shipping out. I think that's going to cover it. It is. Okay, so let's go ahead and ink it up. So anyway, they make a pad now of this paper. This is the new red ink pad. So it's a little stiff because seriously, it's brand new. Um, okay, so Stampin' Up! made Stamparatus accessories. And one of them was uh, the pads of paper. And they're really inexpensive. And it's just going to save you a headache down the road. So... Do yourself a favor. Okay, I'm doing a really super good ink job because this is a very solid image. The beauty of the Stamparatus is if I stamp it here and let's say I miss a spot and I really hate what I've got going on, um, that is completely okay. It does not matter because I can just ink it and stamp it again. And it's gonna go right in the same exact place. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this image, really. It's gonna saturate, but you know what? Let's work on this area right over here. So I'm just going to ink it up one more time. All right, inking it up. And I'm going to stamp. And I'm going to, as I stamp, I'm going to pay special attention to this area right up here that I didn't so much love. All right, and I'm going to shake my whole table for you all to enjoy the vertigo. Okay. Okay, yes, much better. I love it. All right, I'm going to set this over here. It's very saturated. I'm going to set it over there and let it dry out a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to stamp this little dude. All right, so I'm gonna take this piece out. And isn't that great? It just comes right out. The other thing that they've offered now with the Stamparatus that you can buy separately is additional plates like this. Because look, I've got another one set up right now. It comes with two, but I could do all kinds of stamping on here. And this one's gonna, I'm gonna have this come down. It could go side to side also. The beauty of these is that you can move them. And my next video, it may not be next in the order that you see it, but it is going to be on, it's in the horizon, uh, is a video that shows you how to, um, how to use that in a whole nother way. All right. So this little reindeer dude up here is from the cookie cutter, let me see, cookie cutter Christmas. This isn't new from this catalog. Uh, we had it last Christmas and it has a matching corresponding punch. And as you can see, it makes gingerbread men or the little Eskimo, or this is part of the teddy bear or Santa or reindeer. I know, so adorable. So it's kind of upside down. 
I'm going to pull in this little mat. This comes with your Stamparatus also, and it fits right in here. And it is for the photopolymer stamps. And you need to put that in there when you're using the photopolymer stamps because remember, they don't have any extra sponge layer. So Red Rubber has this extra sponge layer. Photopolymer doesn't have any kind of layer like that. This is your makeshift sponge layer. All right, so I am going to slide this in here. I know, you think it's a new one, it's not. And I've already made this. Um, this is a little template that I made and all I did was stamp it once and then punch it out with my punch like this. Okay, this is my punch that corresponds with it. And then I left it like this and I always use a different color. The reason that I did this and punched all these little guys out beforehand rather than normally I would stamp something and then I would fit it over the punch and punch it out. But um, I wanna show you here, I'll pull a piece of scrap paper here. When I punch this guy out, look at this. There are just a ton of little extra pieces. See all these little extra pieces? I mean, it's great. There is a little heart and a bow tie and eyes, right, or buttons. Um, so it's great, except if I wanna make a lot of these guys and I want this to be my Christmas card, now I have to figure out where I can stamp so I can punch or stamp one, punch it out, stamp one, punch it out. It's not great for uh, assembly line stamping. And if you're gonna make a lot of these, the best thing to do, sit down while you're watching TV and just start punching. And you don't have to worry about any angle specifically, just make sure you don't have that showing, the little gapes, little gaping holes. You make sure that it's all covered in your punch and punch. And you could just punch out as many as you can out of different scraps of paper until you have all the guys you need. All right, so now I've got my template in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this in right like a puzzle piece, okay? It just pops right in there like a puzzle piece. I'm using Early Espresso for the uh, reindeer. Mind you, this is a uh, crumb cake, by the way. I'll list that here for sure, but so you know, crumb cake. This is Early Espresso. This is not the new pad. Normally, I would absolutely um, Versamark this before I did it. Ooh, I got that super messy. Um, I would Versamark it normally before I would stamp or ink it up if it's a photopolymer because it's a really saturated color, but I've had this stamp for a long time and I didn't do it several times and so it's just really dark. Now I'm just gonna put it down, give it a little pressure, one, two, three. One, two, three is my standard fare there and I'm gonna take it out and look at that. Adorable, he's perfect and ready to go. Now if I were gonna make a bunch of these, I would just, let's just pretend like this is a blank eye again, I would just take another one, pop it in there, stamp it. Take another one, pop it in there and stamp it. And I could do this while I'm watching TV. I always say that. I never get a chance to watch TV, just so you know. I never, really don't watch a lot. Anyway, um, I could do this when I'm supposed to be doing something else, like laundry. That's more realistic. But I could make a whole bunch of these and then assemble my cards when I have all my parts. You know, I would just set out all my parts and there's bam, 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 assembly line. All right, so that's two different ways you can use the Stamparatus. And it cleans up, I know you saw that big smudge on there. It's okay, it cleans up. Actually, I should show you how it cleans up. It cleans up, if you get ink on it, the same way that you would use it to clean um, a normal stamp. So the Stamparatus base plate just cleans the same way and I just use my Stampin' Mist. This Stampin' Mist is great because it kind of conditions your stamps too. In between stamping, I might just wipe it off with a disgruntled paper towel. Uh, but if I'm really, you know, at the end of the day when I'm really scrubbing it out, I scrub out my stamps really carefully. I clean them and I put them all away. Okay, back to work. So we know this is going to go on here, but we are going to have a bow that go, that's tucked under here. So I don't want to glue it on just yet. And that was my spare dude. Oh, his little red heart is so cute. All right. Also, I went ahead and punched this out ahead of time because you guys completely know how to punch out a circle, right? But then I lost it. Oh no, here it is. Um, okay, this is just a half inch little circle that I punched out of red glimmer paper. And that is part of gonna be part of my reindeer. I, for that, am going to use a regular size dimensional. I know you would wanna use maybe a little guy, but I like the real one, the real size, the normal size for this, because it pretty much covers the entire circle. So there's no wobble in his nose, it's down. All right, and I'm gonna just go ahead and stick that on. 
bonus. All right, now I need to tie my ribbon. The ribbon that I am using today is this one here. It is called Mixed Satin Ribbon, and it has two different textures. Can you see that there? Two different textures. The top half is kind of ribbed like a grain would be, and the bottom is satin, and it is so pretty because um, it just has a little extra something, a little extra something, something going on. I'm going to use my bow maker. If you don't have a bow maker, I don't make them, but I do have a customer's husband who does, and I can get one to you if you would like. Um, it makes it so easy, and if you don't know how to make this bow that I'm making real quick here, then, um, and you have a bow maker or a fork or somebody with two fingers, that also works. You just have to have a volunteer. Um, if you wanna learn how to make this kind of bow, easy peasy, check out my videos. I have one back there, look at that. Isn't that great? Okay, so. I am going to want this to stick right on here. Oh, I forgot a part. We're missing a piece. Okay, this is a framelit. So these are the stitch shapes, okay? And I am using this square right here, the largest square. It leaves a little stitch line, as you can see here. It makes it look like a patch. So, of course, I love it because, you know, I'm also a quilter. Um, I went ahead and cut these out. Now, here's, a, here's something I wanted to tell you also about cutting. This piece right here... When you cut it out, the nearest size, the nearest piece that would kind of fit in it logically when you're going to cut it out is three by three. And it doesn't really make sense to cut three by three squares out of an eight and a half by 11 because you're only gonna get two across and you're gonna have a two and a half inch strip left over. And then you're only gonna get three tall and you're gonna have a two inch strip at the top. So that two inches and then two and a half inches kind of a waste, you're only really getting uh, one, two, three, four, five, six out of it. What I did instead is I used, I used a 12 by 12 piece of paper. I cut three by three squares. So they looked like this originally. Then I put my framelit in there, cut it out. I kind of centered it as carefully as I could. And now look, I have just a bunch of these little frames. And when I say a bunch, I had a class where we made this. So here are these beautiful frames. And I will figure out something cool and make a video for you. But for now, just so you know, when you're cutting, calculate what would best serve you in terms of paper and lack of waste, okay? All right, back to this. So this is just glued straight on. It's got this dot on there. It's just glued straight on the card base. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of lay it out. Um, my gingham print there is pretty straight. I may have made it a little crooked, but then that's just me. That's just who I am. All right, I am going to use my Tombow liquid glue, so again, class net last night and I completely left caps off everything it was one of those days it was one of those days everybody that walked into class last night said oh my gosh I had the worst day today I really needed this and I thought what a blessing to be in a position to help people when they've had a really bad day come in and just be creative because creativity solves everything I have a little smudge with the, the brown thumb there that I'm gonna casually wipe on my table um, but that's okay because I'm going to hide it with my ribbon. All right, so here is my ribbon, and I know that it's going to go right across there. So I really only need it to be about here, right? I'm going to move these out of the way. And I am going to use a glue dot. And glue dots are your friend, people. Don't fight against the urge to use a glue dot. Um, I'm just going to touch the bow knot right here to the dot. Not to the dot. Not to the dot, and I'm going to stick it where I want it. I can tape that after. I'm not worried about that, but now I know where I want it. This guy's just going to get glued on, so he'll be perfect right there. Awesome. And I have one more stamp piece. Okay, so let's just go ahead and tape this on. When I'm attaching it to the back, you guys are welcome to use whatever you'd like. I will tell you what I use. So some people like to put a little snail back here and just kind of pin it. That's fine if that's what you want, but I think really... It works just as well to use just a tiny, tiny piece of scotch tape back here. My bow is going to be held in place by that um, glue dot. I just want to make sure I get my angle the way I want it. Good. And then I'm just going to put this little piece of scotch tape back here. And then a little piece of scotch tape back here. And I just think that really is going to hold it in place. What you don't want to use... And I almost never say don't use this, but don't use liquid glue whenever you are doing ribbon because it just seriously makes a big, huge gummy mess, okay? So, but now you can use it here 
and put it on this card. I thought maybe I grabbed the one that I clogged last night. When I want to get it out, probably after this video, I will remember to do it. I will use dental floss threaders and just stick it right in there and unclog it. If I haven't shown you how to do that, I will do that another day. Okay, so I'm going to stick that on there. Awesome. Good to go. And now I'm going to glue this in there. There we go. Put a little liquid glue on the back of my deer. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. Okay, this is like my Marilyn Monroe deer because I just got a little bit of artifact there. I just got a little dot of ink and I thought, oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's a little, it's a little Cindy Crawford deer. Okay. Oh, I still need that color. All right, so the last thing that I'm going to do is right here I'm going to stamp Tis the Season on a little strip of paper. And again, this is crumb cake. It's the same color as the deer and I'm going to use Early Espresso as my ink. Um, this piece is just a half an inch by three inches. So it's a really small little piece and it won't be hard really for me to stamp on because it is um, a Claremont stamp on the back of this. This is the sentiment I used on the inside last night, but I can just eyeball this for the most part, one, two, three, because, um, because I can see right through it. So that makes it so super easy. And then I put this on dimensionals. So you guys have seen that I use all these parts of dimensionals. I've used all the whole ones here. Oh, I have one whole one left here. But I use all the edges too. All of these edges I use because they're the same material that the other dimensionals are. They're just edges. It's not, it's not like the heel of bread. Everybody likes edges. Okay, so I'm gonna peel that off. And look, that worked out just perfectly. It's gonna go right on here like that. And now I need um, my little diamonds. And let's see if I can remember where I put them. They are also super cute and not here. Also super cute and not here. But anyway, they are, oh, here they are. Oh my gosh. You know what I do? I actually lay, I should show you my table one day, you crack up. I actually lay out everything that I'm gonna need and I look at it because I hate editing. So I don't edit anything, right? I just, whatever I've got is what I use for you. Um, look at this new tool. Is this not super cool? I don't remember what it's called. I will list it here, but it just slides like, it, it has a little bend in it. So it can just slide those little diamonds up. Um, anyway, so I lay out my, I lay out everything that I'm going to need for the card. So I get my glue and my scissors and all my stuff out for you and set it out on the table and then I probably lose it. I bury it under something else. Okay, that is it for the card. Obviously, I would put an interior sentiment in there and we are good to go. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you like this card. Um, be sure that you check back because I am going to be posting a lot of our Christmas cards that we're making in our Christmas club right now. If you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would really love to be yours. Please um, subscribe to this, and if you place an order, you will get a thank you card from me. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a great day. Bye-bye.